Welcome to Denby Does Dharma. I'm joined by the wonderful Dr. Karen Can, all the way from upstate, uh, upstate New York, it's originally from Canada, and she's been speaking out uh, for quite a while, I think, <laughs> in the not just in her medical profession, but certainly within the spiritual community about all the uh, interesting things that have been happening in the last 18 months or so. Uh, as a, an established family practitioner, as well as now a spiritual teacher and mentor to many people around the world, it's an absolute privilege to talk to you today, Karen, so thanks for making the time. Oh, thanks, Debbie. This is very exciting. And you're doing some great work there and interviewing some really awesome people that I definitely admire. And the work that you do really helps spread, you know, the light and the news around the world. So thank you. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah, it, it all counts at the moment, doesn't it? We're all like being our yeah. citizen journalists all around the world. And, and on, on that note, what, what's happening on the ground where you are now? Because we know that mainstream media is giving a totally different story. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, I live in a very small town and, um, you know, a lot of the, our Olympic venues, we've had two Olympics here in Lake Placid and our Olympic venues are run by the state. So they have their own set of rules and, you know, things like that. And, and um, the, the energy in the town is more old school in general. Um, and when I first became a, you know, an acupuncturist and uh, in the town, um, it was my husband at the time, my ex, now ex, uh, said, are you crazy? People aren't going to pay for that. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, cause they're like old school, like, you know, like that was too new age, but it's one of those, luckily for me, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of thing. And I was just like, well, I'm going to try it. And, you know, I'm usually very like positive about things and, um, enthusiastic. Uh, so that, you know, worked out really well. And then at one point we had three acupuncturists in our small town, um, mm -hmm. But the energy in town, there's really, there's like these people from out of town that, that actually own a lot of business, some of them very, very wealthy. Um, and then we have um, the people that grew up here with not so wealthy, you know, and some of them really quite poor. Um, and then we have these really educated people and then not educated, like it, it's just a dichotomy. And it wasn't that, uh, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that it just dawned on me, like just a little ways away, like 40 minutes away is, um, is Paul Smith's, which is like a, a college. Mm -hmm. And right next to them is this big swath of land owned by the Rockefeller <laughs> and their friends. And uh, one of my friends actually works for John Ma, who is the head of Alibaba or Jack Ma, Jack Ma, sorry. I don't know him personally, but um, yeah, so he actually works for him, right? And um, everyone didn't think much of it at all. And um and, you know, this quiet little town, you know, it's a resort town, but it's amazing that there's goings on in here. That I, I think I don't know, like, you know, everything that's going on. So I'm, because I'm more global, you know, I'm retired from my acupuncture medical practice. Now I have a, you know, global audience and uh, clients and, and students from around the world. I function on that level. So on, on a kind of small town level, um, we're kind of, isolated like I don't feel isolated because I'm connected to the tribe online but I just bumped into some of my you know wellness type friends here in town and they do feel isolated they do feel like no one is listening to them and in, in fact one is a, a co-owner of a health food store she's actually a holistic nutritionist and she's not allowed to go into store number one without her mask on <laughs> she yeah. owns the store okay because all the other young people who are vaccinated oh did I say the v word shoot yeah. um, <laughs> they yeah. won't, yes so they they you have to beat that one out um so they they just not comfortable with her in there so they're masked they're jabbed and masked and they insist that she because she's not jabbed wear a mask as well mm -hmm. um but so, so she doesn't hang out at that store that often she's in the other store where she's completely unmasked <laughs> it's, it's a anyway, so these kind of small town things like this happens in communities right so yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, and, and it builds from the small community and then it, it spreads out, doesn't it? I mean, and it probably goes from the big cities and spreads out and infects the smaller communities as well. It's kind of like a cross, almost like a cross pollination really, isn't it? Uh, it's before we get, I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff that I wanna to talk to you about that most definitely, but I mean, acupuncture. So that's a great bridge between the medical realm that you have been trained in to the spiritual realm. So how did that come about? Well, you know, I am a Chinese from Hong Kong. And uh, one of my aunties was an acupuncturist. Oh. 
And my mom had fibromyalgia. I ended up with that uh, in my 30s. She had an, and ended up being disabled from it from her school teacher job. But my auntie would actually come and uh, administer acupuncture and she would feel better. Uh, she didn't live close to us. So she, you know, got it intermittently. And at that point, I don't think my mom felt like she wanted to pay anyone to do it. <laughs> so it was just this auntie coming and, uh, you know, and I think somewhere along the line, I don't know whether there's my mom and auntie asked, would you consider being an acupuncturist? And I said, no, I want to be a real doctor. <laughs> uh, but then what happened was during medical school, we had an opportunity to learn, in Canada to learn acupuncture, uh, kind of a weekend thing. And it was like a really good price for students. And I thought, you know, I don't know. My mom always felt better. So let me try it out. Right. So I learned it and, and it was like a weekend workshop. And in Canada at that point, the rules were very loose as to who can do what we fit, you know, they figure, well, you put a big, huge hypodermic needle in people. I think you can handle a small acupuncture needle and not kill someone, you know? Yeah. So I started using it, you know, in the, in the office with my preceptor. And I said, do you mind if I try this? And I was getting such amazing results, like in the ER, you know, I had someone with hemiplegic migraine, one needle, because that's all I had in my pocket, one <laughs> needle. And she was 10 minutes later, completely fine, no pain, left the ER. The nurses were like, hey, did you document what medication you gave her? I said, I didn't give her anything. Really? I said, I, I did an acupuncture needle. Okay, whatever. Just document in the chart. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and my, my professor did not say anything to me. So I was like, Phew. I thought I was going to get in trouble. But you know, she left a happy camper, right? So I had these really amazing magical experiences, which often we do have, especially at the beginning of our journey, then it gets harder because we get harder and harder cases. Uh, and so I was really loving to, to bring that back in. And, but it took a while because the, the Canadian um, certification and all that kind of stuff, very different from the U S. So in the U S ended up at UCLA, became a professor, had to take a $5,000 course, you know, mm -hmm. to get all the certification again and, and all that. And then finally, after years, I was able to to do that. And then I ended up with this, you know, hybrid practice. I wasn't doing, I was doing like Western medicine in one clinic, and then I was doing acupuncture in another clinic. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so that's that's kind of how it started. Yeah. And I love acupuncture. It's brilliant. Uh, as you say, literally, it's just the, the placement of one needle and, and, you know, you're, you're fulfilling your family's lineage now with, with the gift <laughs> that you have. So, you know, your auntie and your mum and uh, all your ancestors are probably up there smiling, definitely going, awesome, carry, carry the torch. And it's funny when you say, like, I've known some doctors from Europe, for example, um, who are, you know, very, very intelligent, obviously, and they've gone through rigorous training. And yet, when they go to another country, they've got to do all these extra certifications and take a whole lot of new tests and things like that. It's, it's, it's such a, uh, it's an interesting world, that's for sure. And I know that uh, before we started recording, you were, we were talking, just touching on as, as the same for me in the spiritual community as well, and, and the different modalities that I've done and, and the yoga community too, uh, with what's been going on the last 18 months, we're sort of sitting here looking around our peers going, do you actually think that? Can you not see that? Like this sense of um, no, not separation, although it has led to a certain degree of division, but just the, the sense of denial of uh, that we're seeing in people and also in ourselves as well, because when we have had to face certain truths, you've got to go through your own healing process and right. acknowledgement of that, haven't you? So, um, and I've watched a few of your videos where you've actually spoken about that, the, the, the traumatic uh, process of learning the truth when you do red pill someone or you share, whether it's talking about those sorts of topics or whether it's just sharing any sort of truth. Uh, and then the process and the energetics of denial. So can you sort of share a little bit about your journey with that? Sure, I'd love to. You know, what I notice is that um, the people that are not uh, following the popular crowd, in this case, or the mainstream, generally feel scared or they're really like worried about what other people might think. Because nobody wants a barrage of coercion or, you know, criticism or anything like that. So they just don't say anything. Yeah. And then what happens is when we discover that we're kind of have the same thoughts then it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know? And in fact, I mean, literally I was texting this, this friend of mine today and she literally said, cause I, you know, we were at a place and I saw her and uh, I'll read it what she said. So um, we gave her a hug, right? And she says, I can't tell you how much it meant to get your hug at the store the other day. Mm, beautiful. So, you know, these things that we just take for granted are no longer taken for granted yeah. now. But I think there, you know, I think that the, the whole denial process, some people, you know, give it a bad rap, but I, I kind of look at both sides of each story. And I think that 
if we can stay out of judgment and stay in curiosity instead, we're not only happier and therefore we're happier we're resonating a higher vibration, right? And that really literally affects people instead of infects people with our anxiety or worry or whatever uh, we're resonating with. So that denial can be really, really helpful. It can actually save someone's life <laughs> uh, to some degree because I know they say ignorance is bliss. I don't really believe in the deeper that that is really true. Um, but I think that Denial is a defense, what's, you know, in psychology and psychiatry called a defense mechanism. It is there to protect that person, at least temporarily. Yeah. Um, so there's usefulness for that. And if we can honor that, if that's where people are, because they don't have the capacity to really receive any other reality, then it's like, okay, you know, like, let's not, uh, I have, I have a meme, you would like it. I have a meme that was like, you know, it, nobody wants to wake up to someone grabbing them, shaking them by the arms and going, Wake up! right. Cause it's violent. It's violent. It's traumatic. Right. But you know, if, if, if the analogy would be, you know, do you pour, you know, do you make some pancakes and, and, and <laughs> bacon and, and You're they smell it. Wake up, wake up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something out where it's, yeah. you know, uh, then it's like, it's a possibility. So it's not a guarantee, of course. We all, we as humans, we just have that tendency. We want guarantees. We want security. We want to know exactly what's going to happen when. And that's not really life. So we're really being trained in this last 18 months, you know, to really flow with what is and keep letting go, keep letting go of whatever is, you know, causing us stress or whatever is causing us division. Can we still love even though we're completely polarized? And I never thought that that was possible before, but I'm like, wow, that is really what we're being asked to do yeah. is can we be completely on the different page, but still fully love that person and honor and respect where they are without mm -hmm. judging them for where they are and where we think they should be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, being, a, you know, why should anybody listen to us if we're stressed, if we're not happy, right? If we're critical, mm. if we're saying mean things, mm. or telling them they're stupid, you know, like screaming at them and yelling. Why would at them? anybody listen to us? Because yeah. we're not very nice, right? Yeah, yeah. But if we can be more, and this is a process, more patient, more compassionate, uh, still hold healthy boundaries. Of course, this is not for me. This is not okay. Whatever it is, um, then you know, we, we do the best we can and we don't have to traumatize people with the truth and just more like an invitation, just like that, that bacon and pancakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I'm vegetarian, so I'll leave out the bacon, but the, 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 the bacon, <laughs> All right. pancakes definitely in the fruit. Um, it, it's so true because as we said before, you know, we've, we've, all of us who have, uh, who are able to see through certain illusions have gone through our own cathartic healing process of like going, oh my God, this is happening. I've always thought it would, and now it is panic. And then screaming and ranting and raving going, everybody else quick, wake up. This is what's happening. You need to see the truth. And then once you look at your own triggers and and work to hear your own trauma in response with that, then you settle down, you tend to come full circle. Thank you, Blaise. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're able to be, because I, I believe, as I'm sure you do too as well, that as a human, we're, we're infinitely compassionate and loving. We're good-natured, beautiful, caring beings. So even when we're in our, in our rage phase of like, wake up, that's still coming from love because we just want people to see and understand and to, you know, to be okay, to be safe and to, and to help themselves and others. Uh, and then on by the same token, the person who's getting that barrage obviously is getting traumatized by that because we don't know what you know, they're holding on to, what their stories, their life stories are and their woundings are. So even though we're trying to help and coming from that space of like, I want to, I want to educate you, we start to polarize and push one another away. And as you say, yeah. it's, it's a real challenge. I mean, I've been doing this, this um, energetic work for like nearly 25 years and it's, it's still a challenge, especially when you recognize that, okay, this is the moment that I actually chose to incarnate on the earth for, to keep moving through your own practices, to move from that space of loving allowance and just go, okay, if you don't want to pick up that piece of paper that says all these things, then that's okay. But don't deny me the right to do that or others to do that. It's this peer pressure, isn't it? That sort of comes into the psychology 
uh, which we've been manipulated by brilliantly, you know, evil, evil. Very, uh, yeah, evil absolutely evil. brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. You've got to give credit where credit's due. Um, yeah. to, and to understand that there are so many people, as you well know, being in the medical field too, that have been polluted physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for so long through all the different avenues of you know, pollutants in the food and the air and the water, et cetera, and then the, the collective consciousness of all the trauma that we're carrying as a species as well, and then all the environmental things, et cetera. So, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's one of those things, I think, that uh, what we do, we all have to go through our own time frame with that process. And I, I for one, when I go to peaceful rallies, not protests, um, and I, the different speakers that uh, I always resonate with the ones that are very calm and just articulate things intelligently and just compassionately. There's passion, there's drive there, and there's the sense of urgency right. of like, wow, we've got to do stuff. But the minute that someone gets on the speaker and they start screaming and yelling, even though they're passionate and, uh, and are aware as well, I just feel my whole body just gets like, oh, I just, it pushes me away. And, and it's their anger that, uh, right. that I think polarizes. So, yeah, I think there's so many different consciousnesses that are coming up in the collective field, as you know, with the spiritual work that you've been doing too, that are here to be recognized. And I say loved to death because it <laughs> needs to be, uh, you know, experience. We need to talk about these things. We need to have these conversations and go, that's your perspective and that's your opinion and that's your experience and I don't have to take that on or believe it but I can at least allow it to exist right right exactly and I think that this every time there is some sort of stress or pressure um think of it as like a diamond uh being created right you've got carbon you've got a lump of coal with a lot of pressure <laughs> you know it becomes a diamond so I think that for example, um, here, I don't know what it is, you know, where you are, but, uh, you know, in Canada and certain parts of the United States, uh, they're uh, allowing children or encouraging children to get the, you know, wet uh, without parental consent. And so at the age of 12, there are many parents that have really rose up and say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think this is okay. I don't think they have the maturity to make those kinds of decisions you know, and so I call them the mama bear energy, you know, that are speaking up at that stuff. And, and sometimes it has to get to that level so that that energy can rise up, you know, uh, the mama bear energy can rise up. And um, yeah, and, and that place where, you know, some, like I said, brilliant marketing, because <laughs> it's like the teenage years are already a rebellious year. Yep. So how does, how does a parent navigate that? And how they navigate that is with conscious conversations, which is a very advanced skill. Yep. It really is. It really calls us to be at that level of advanced skill of honor and respect and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm good at it all the time. I'm definitely not. Uh, <laughs> but we keep, you know, going, whoops, okay, that's not quite how that wanted it to turn out. Yeah, okay. you know, and then we just keep teaching ourselves and, and just yeah. reviewing it. And, and then I have a technique in my book, uh, Sensitivity is Your Superpower, called Transformational Telepathy. Level one is very easy. All you do is you, you know, um, have, uh, you know, have that person in your mind who it is you have a conflict with or you wish to have a greater personal relationship with. And then you write their name at the top of a journal or piece of paper and you write down 10 things you appreciate about them and then you feel it. So it's important to feel it. So you write it and you feel it. And, um, and as you do that, what happens is the resistance energy between you and that other person starts to fall or dissolve. And they almost receive packets of this mini love or appreciation from you. And they don't even know that you're doing it because you normally do it in secret. And it can completely transform. And that's why it's called transformational telepathy, the quality of the relationship sometimes overnight. Now we do say do it 30 days straight. Um, and there's a level two, which is much more sophisticated, but, uh, what's really neat is just being able to see that even if you disagree, even if you have a difference of opinion, uh, especially with a loved one and a friend, you can still appreciate them for other things. Yeah. <laughs> and by putting that forward, that resistance is gone because when we're angry and upset and they can't listen to us and they're like, how come they can't wake up and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like, they're feeling this pressure, this resistance from us. Mm -hmm. And then when we let go of that pressure and uh, then it's like, oh, 
then it feels better. And they, and some people, they don't even know why they feel nice about around you, but they just do. And so I've had like literally like 180 degree turnaround in people's attitudes uh, just by doing that simple exercise after the night before arguing or something like that. It's amazing. Oh, that's so brilliant. And that to me, that it's such a beautiful offering. And I know we'll get into it. You've got so many trademarks with all these different healing modalities that you've created, which is in service to everyone. So I, I honor you and thank you for doing that. But it shows essentially that to people who are, uh, who haven't connected with their spiritual side up until this point, and which we know many more are, that, that we are actually telepathic beings and that we're moving. This, this is the ascension process. It's, it's going, yeah, we're in these physical dense bodies, but there's so many different layers and aspects to us. And it's just like uh, exercises that we need to start practicing in order to master that. And that's one of the greatest gifts I found, Karen, through the whole uh, situation last year is that more and more people now actually get that energy can travel anywhere. Like there was yeah. still a certain percentage of the population that were like, okay, well, I might need a healing. They've never done it before. It was all a bit woo woo for them. And they were like, okay, well, I need to go and lie on someone's table. I can sort of understand if they put their hands on me, that they're there physically. I can feel that it's not going to be as weird as I thought it was, but now they're like, oh, I don't actually have to be in the same room. Okay, I don't even have to be in the same country as that person for that energy to transmute. And we'll get into it. Hopefully, that's that's a lot of it's all about frequency, as you know. And for me, I'm even I talked about it in a video yesterday on my YouTube channel. And I've been talking about this for months as well. I think you're, you're going to totally align with it is that this has actually got nothing to do with a pathogen or even a jab. It's actually a frequency spell. And that's how everything is transmitting and that's what we've, we're feeding into in the collective consciousness. But we're moving from spiritual adolescence to spiritual adulthood. And that's mm -hmm. the process, isn't it? Of like rah, having a tantrum and, and questioning things and saying, no, nah, I know better than you. And, you know, and moving, moving ourselves away from, you know, you know, doing the opposite to what we're told, essentially. And that's, we're, we're breaking free from that. So when yeah. you, can you talk a little bit about your Tolpakan? I know I mispronounced that again. Tolpakan. That's okay. There we go. <laughs> And, and also stillness on the fly. I love that title. What what are those? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, Tobacan healing is kind of like the umbrella of the healing modality um, that I teach. And this is so that people can do what I do because we could use many more self healers and even professional healers. So there is a professional track on that. And then there's the self healing track. Um, and it's, it's basically a three-step um, uh, procedure or methodology where we can first align to our inner wisdom or source within zero point field. There's different names for it, of course, creator. And from that space, we can actually do divine muscle testing to ask specific quality questions about, you know, how to do something or how many things need to heal or, you know, ask for certain degrees of help. So we have a sophisticated way of teaching people how to ask these questions. And then the third step, which is activate. So we've got align, ask and activate. Activate really is about um, acti activating these high frequency energies, which now we're getting super woo woo here, uh, which in my other lifetime as a Lemurian healer, I did not end up finishing that task of attuning everyone to these frequencies of which Jesus Christ is, you know, is one of the people that were, was personally attuned by Archangel Raphael, myself as well in that other timeline. So, but the really cool thing is I did accomplish it in this timeline. So I'm on to bigger and better missions, but that was one of my missions in this timeline was to be able to attune most of everyone. Now, did everyone accept it? No, there were a small percentage of people who you know, was not necessary for their highest and greatest good. They had to play some sort of role, you know, uh, as you can imagine, uh, to, for our evolution. So they did not fully receive it. But I think it's like probably 96, 97% of all humans on the planet actually are fully activated in these energies. It's just they don't know how to use it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not that difficult. Um, so that's the actual healing method. And we actually, I created these, um, you know, charts uh, to help people, you uh, you know, be able to figure out the answer faster by knowing what row it is, what column it is. There's certain um, patterns that occur. And then for my weekly YouTube video, sometimes I'll just share some of the more recent patterns, like what's going on here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's the healing modality. And then stillness on the fly is the actual procedure to get to that aligned state, to get to that 
source. And so I have uh, detailed instructions in the book, Sensitive is Your Superpower, as well as, you know, a freebie if people want to, if they're audio visual, they like more of that kind of thing instead of reading. They, you know, they can go to stillnessonthefly.com and they can actually see the 30 minute training. It, it takes longer to explain it than to do it. It only takes about two, three minutes to actually do it. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, there's an MP3 there uh, that you can, you know, get some guidance as well. And, but once people know how to do it, I mean, you can teach it to a three-year-old, you know, it's, it's not that hard. Uh, but I like it because I'm not a very good sit down, close my eyes for 60 minutes meditator. I like, I'm very like all over the place and doing lots of different things. And I had to find a way to, you know, meditate without sitting there meditating. And this was the way um, that I decided to, you know, share it with people because I'm sure there's other people like me. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm a Gemini, so I've got my brain just going in you know, 10 different <laughs> at the same time. And, and I can manage that. That's good. And I've learned how to temper that and balance that. But yeah, definitely it needs to be, things need to be, and not necessarily fast as in our fast food and fast internet and all those sorts of things, but it needs to be almost instantaneous. But that's instant instantaneous manifestation for people too. That's very empowering. Um, and there's no reason that that can't be that because if we're moving from that telepathic field or back into that telepathic field that we've come from and the quantum physics, which I'm not even going to pretend to know and that I understand completely fully. Um, I don't think anybody does. <laughs> anybody does really, but yet all of that stuff is incredible, mind bending then yeah this where we are just this dense matter in this expression but there's so many other uh, uh, layers and levels to our consciousness and our psyche that we can access and that can be just bang think of it bang it happens it happens and that's really useful for a lot of people as you say so many people are time poor uh, or they financially can't afford things that are going to or they you know, just don't have the money to invest in things or they don't even they're not at that stage as you say where they're able to receive certain things or, or even don't even think that they need to receive things and as he, that, that was one of the first big things that you know, I learned and that I had to accept at the beginning of my healing journey as a practitioner as well as my own constant healing was that you can do someone can put as many books or as much information as much proof in front of you but if you're not ready to receive that yeah it's like a brick wall you're talking to a brick wall and that's okay it's not our job to talk someone around or coerce them or force them or even fix or heal them that's totally right. them. you know that's their relationship with yes. God and, and god i think and I think that's a big, I talk about this a lot and I'd love to get your, your take on it about the wounded healer consciousness within the, the, the healing community because for, and certainly, you know, almost 25 years ago when I was just starting out, that was, that was how I was introduced to it actually. Um, the person that I was doing, um, receiving some healing from, they had sort of, you know, whether they'd activated me or whatever the timing was there. They said to me that you now you've got this amazing gift and now you've got to go out there and share it, but you know, don't charge for it because it's your privilege to have this gift and you should just be giving it away. And at the time, because I was so young, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I, I knew no better. Now I know I'm like, hang on a minute, like I don't have to charge through the roof for it because that's not who I am. It's not about money from that perspective, but there needs to be an exchange through, between the giver and the receiver or the recipient. And there's so many other factors, as you know, that come into that that relationship but I started off just going okay well I got this gift so I was doing free Reiki and I was giving away stuff and I wasn't getting any any support back from the universe which was actually at the time as I didn't realize that unconsciously supporting my own poverty consciousness that I still needed to clear <laughs> so I need right to get, right great I need story to, yeah but I think and I think we can all relate to that as healers as well of like getting to that point going actually no I'm worth this and I'm sharing something that's of value and it takes the level, as you well understand, the level of um, grounding and self-care and sacrifice that one makes to be a, a healer, uh, from a professional perspective, certainly, to be in that space to hold that for others and to help them do their whatever they need to do, because it's nothing to do really with us, we're just a conduit, that takes great commitment and care and money to support ourselves to be in that space. So, right. Like they yeah, say, you know, on, on the airplane is like, put your own mask on oh, first for the oh, oxygen oh. before somebody else. And yeah, yep. there are, we unfortunately get taught that. I mean, you overtly got taught that other times it's just an underpinning of energy, but it doesn't serve us. And uh, one, uh, one financial uh, guy I really like, he's, he's uh, more religious, but um, Dave Ramsey, he has uh, this financial peace university and one line, and he's a great speaker. So one line on stage, he's like, look, it's your responsibility to get your handle on the money. 
because if not, who else, the bad guys win. That's what he said. <laughs> no, I, I don't, you know, I mean, he's a little, you know, a little polarizing good guys, bad guy kind of thing, but it really did strike, strike me because, you know, we heard in the Bible, you know, blessed are the poor, but it's not, the thing is they, that certain powers that be took certain things out of the Bible <laughs> and yeah. uh, deleted certain things to misconstrue it on purpose so that we would not step into our power. Like, why is it that it's okay to give you know, a basketball player, a $15 million, you know, salary for bouncing a ball and, you know, mm-hmm. putting it in the basket and it's, and it's not okay for a healer or even a medical doctor to receive money, you know, for what they do mm-hmm. um, to agree. Like there's like the ceiling, there should be a limit to that kind of thing. So what happens is that all these healers end up, you know, poor and sick. We mm-hmm. see them all the time, you know, mm-hmm. poor and sick, poor and sick. And, and, you know, and, and it's like, okay, well, that's not working. <laughs> And so it's really time for all of us in this space, uh, unless somebody, you know, chooses to continue in that other space to, to really go, okay, let's do the harder work here. The harder work is how do I heal that poverty consciousness for myself? And then in, in turn, that helps heal the collective because, you know, I'm no good to anyone mm-hmm. if I'm sick and I'm no good to anyone if I'm poor. Like, yeah. you know, the greatest thing about having more money now for me is I get to give more stuff free. <laughs> I mean, I love that, right? Now, before I used to get free, 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 and then nothing left for myself. That was just my thing. But now I was like, oh, okay, I see how that works now. So it's so delightful to be able to, you know, share things for free or more things for free because I am taken care of, you know, because the house is being paid for the, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, and it was so different before. You're praying the abundance for yourself and then that just starts to get in its own little uh, movement and momentum as well, definitely. And Right. How can we heal others or help other be that conduit, like you said, to heal others when we, we don't work on that for ourselves? Mm-hmm. Because everybody wants the same thing. I mean, they want, whether they are in this camp or this camp or, you know, mask or no mask or, you know, jab or no jab, you know, everyone wants the same thing. They, they want happiness. They want joy. They want health. They want healthy relationships. They want prosperity, right? They may not believe they can get all of that, but we all want the same thing. So why don't we just focus yeah. on what it is we do agree on? Yeah. And what it is we do desire and then do the inner work to get to that space ourselves, which then holds the positive morphing field and energy mm-hmm. uh, for others to tap in and tune into that because they may not have that higher responsibility level like you and I do, but, and that's okay because we're older souls, right? But if we create and, and hold that positive morphic field of that abundance, joy, peace, no matter what, no matter what hits us, mm-hmm. then people can t- tune in and tap into that and have an easier time navigating it. We're really, really helping people by being in that space of love. Definitely. That's that's what true leadership is, isn't it? Spiritual leadership, leading by example of being in that space. And and when you're saying that, Karen, maybe I just had this visual of everybody, you know, we give flowers to others, to someone for, you know, just as a nice gesture or birthday, or we give plants and things like that to one another. Maybe everyone should start giving people olive branches or olive trees, you know, to encourage subliminally, you know, it, all it takes is one person to just go, okay, here's the olive branch, you know, mm. figuratively, but also energetically. I'm willing to just let this be, put this down, apologize, take it's my responsibility for, you know, for my party and co-creation, whatever, and just right. move forwards, you know, say sorry, et cetera, uh, move forwards. And I'm not just talking about um, between you know, original people's tribes and white people and different races and all that sort of stuff, because we're all one, um, but just on a personal level with uh, individuals too, and also with ourselves, like to go, I'm actually sorry for doing this to myself and apologizing and doing that yeah. inner work. Because if we're not, and that's another wonderful gift that this whole crisis, I think, has brought to the fore is that it's actually got nothing to do with anybody else. It's all about me. It's all about you. It's all about the individual. And that's when we're in that strong, when we're that strong link, then we create a flexible and a fluid and a, and a, a chain of integrity energetically that supports everybody. You know, we're all not pulling our weight, but sort of, you know what I mean? Like we're all participating because we're all being given, I believe, the same you know, opportunities from the universe to step up and to grow and to expand and to heal. And we're just on our different trajectories of acceptance or denial with that too. Right. And everyone's growth rate is going to be different. And if you talk to me, you know, 25 years ago, it'd be a very different conversation. Same. <laughs> I was a medical doctor and I was, you know, 
one of those that I was like to the T, whatever the you know academy said we should be doing, I was going to do the best of it, you know, and I made charts and, you know, made sure all the kids came in when they're supposed to come in and, you know, get their, you know, what's and, and, you know, I didn't know any better, but my heart was in the right place. You know, I was trying to do the best that I could do at that time. And I think most people, I mean, yeah, there are some people that clearly are not trying to do good, but I think most people are. So their heart's in the right place. They, they want the best. And if we can see it from that point of view, even if they're, you know, it it looks on the surface, they're, you know, coercing us or criticizing us or whatever. And and the bottom end is like they, the end, um, you know, what they're looking for is really to help not to hurt. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So if we can honor them from that and, and, you know, we can agree to disagree, which, you know, I've said that to my family. (laughs) Um, and, And sometimes it's great because like my sister said, I really don't want to talk about that. And she's, you know, I said, well, thank you for your honesty, you know, mm-hmm. and transparency. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of getting upset, she's just, I really don't want to talk about that topic. I'm like, right. okay, you know, and I really respect her for that. And, um, and you know, and, and the other thing too, is when people do get, you know, that angry or high on their horse or what you should or shouldn't do, or whatever like that, just, we have to remember that um, we, if people can say, I'm sorry, like you just said, if people can say, I'm sorry, for their part in, you know, in, in reality, co- you know, co-creating their reality, that really reflects our degree of self-esteem. And we have to understand people don't have that degree of self-esteem. Not everybody does. So they're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, brings in, that brings in the compassion as well, because yeah. Uh, yeah, and and, the, and just again, the, the holding of space, as we hear this phrase so often, it's it's just it's loving allowance, allowing somebody to be as they need to be in that moment. Because we're we're all going through our journeys, as you just said. You no, know, speaking to me 25 years ago, a totally different person as well. And that's the idea is that we grow and evolve. And how do we do that? By opening our brains and flushing them out sometimes, and then opening up yep. this. Yeah. Brainwashing is a good thing sometimes. <laughs> Wash the brain out and then go, okay, well, maybe I'm, you know, maybe my ego is making me do that, or maybe my pride or whatever. And I should probably, you know, take this on board. Or, you know, if you're triggered by something, and I've learned over the years as well that that's an opportunity to look at something that still is unresolved oh, yeah. within yourself rather than just going, oh, right. Okay it all and everyone's wrong and it's your yeah. fault that I feel like that but yeah. as you know that's a natural part of the whole you know growing up yeah. maturing spiritually humanly wise phase but it's really been really interesting to watch this Karen too and to, sit and to hear what your experience has been on the other side of the world as well because in the spiritual community in general I think it's all over the place not just here in Australia um, there are still and I had a, a, a flavor of this in the beginning until and again, as I said, I've been down so many rabbit holes and I'm a research nut. So I make sure that I look at all perspectives. I don't just go, well, I'm only going to research what I believe in and verify that. I go, I'm going to research what I really don't dig and understand that as well, um, which is a space for a lot of people to be in. So the whole thing around uh, healers, for example, going, well, I'm not going to treat anybody who's had the jab because then therefore I'm going to get infected or I don't agree with them morally, ethically, or I just think that they're a lost cause. So what, what's your experience of that, that, you know, that polarity? Because um, as I said, before I actually understood that you know, this virus actually doesn't exist the way that we've been told and pathogens don't even exist with the germ theory and all that stuff. And then even the jab itself is not even physically shedding or doing whatever they're saying it's doing it's in a frequency thing that we're picking up on it's my little theory of that so when we feel into all these things and we make peace at the level of consciousness that we have at the time to do that then it really doesn't matter whether someone's had this or not if we're a healer and we're here at this point in time to help humanity then it's almost like we're the frontline doctors in a way now yes yes I mean, the stuff that you've had to do in ER, ER and triage and whatever, and people snotting and coughing and bleeding all over the place, you just get in with your gloves and you just help people, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and the thing, you know, healers, I mean, there's, you know, various, um, I don't want to say levels of healers. Uh, what do I want to say? Um, oh, no, I'll pull you up there. There are different, they're definitely different levels. <laughs> different abilities right yeah. right and, and and it's it's a it's actually um I call sometimes I call these things abundance challenges and I don't mean abundance as in money what I mean is 
any challenge that triggers us, and you talked about triggers earlier, right? So anything that triggers us to overcome it, to get to the next late stage of our spiritual evolution. So I'm not going to necessarily say you're a healer. So you have to see everyone you don't feel comfortable seeing because they may not be at that level. Um, but at the same time, um, it's very curious because we have actually the opposite thing too <laughs> going on. Uh, like, you know, where, where, you know, I get massage, you know, the, the proprietor there is very uncomfortable uh, with, with, you know, me being unmasked uh in her speech is i'm just trying to protect my family and so in my mind i'm going well there's a heck of a lot of other things you could be doing you know <laughs> but you didn't ask me and i'm not her healer right so yeah. i'm like keeping that boundary and that's perception and i'm you know she didn't ask me a different opinion right she didn't ask me for that information mm -hmm. um so that's where she's at i i can say that i get a little disappointed which i guess is a triggering i'm still you know working out that piece in myself when you know i hear about healers um that um either like you know there's one one person very popular on instagram her name is ali zach and and she had a meme there and i and i felt it i felt the resonance and she said look if you are a naturopathic doctor homeopath reiki master energy healer and and you are relying on this thing you know like you just sold out hmm. i mean it was very harsh it's yeah. very harsh yeah. but the thing is it's like well well, gee, you know, if you are telling people how great your healing modality is, right, or, or you're, or you're a healer, you can be clear about, hey, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm, I'm, I don't do that kind of healing. I'm, you know, and that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. But if we're kind of advertising that we're healing and we're doing all this kind of stuff, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Especially like we have a higher, we do, well, maybe not Reiki people in my area, but because they're not necessarily licensed and yada, yada, but, um, but definitely, you know, naturopathic doctors, homeopaths, you know, MDs, carpet, I mean, they're licensed professionals. So they actually have a code of conduct that they have to abide by. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that means it's like, Hey, because I, as an MD, I did not know before, um, of, you know, certain pharmaceuticals and the particular side effects. I did not know that thermosol was actually mercury. I did not know there was aluminum in vaccines. I thought there was a, just inert aluminum of anything. Like I did not know because somebody else told me it was fine. Mm -hmm. My association told me it was fine. So I'm like, okay, it's fine. It must be fine, right? And it's not until I watched documentary after documentary and basically got shocked into reality. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, cause I, I, my personality is, is very innocent. So I think good of everyone, right? I never thought in a million years that, that pharmaceutical companies might not have the best interest. Like, like, I know that sounds really naive, but that's just where I was, um, as a medical doctor. So then it was like, okay, so after discovering so, but once I made that commitment to continue down that rabbit hole and to discover and to research and see what's best for my clients, all or patients, that is really the focus, yeah. what is best. Yeah. And the universe will help me in that, which is really great. And yes, there are some healers that will deny that they get into that fear. And I think that what's upset probably me or triggered me the most yeah. was healers like, and I remember, and I, I, maybe I was too harsh back then, but I remember when Donald Trump first got, um, you know, the presidency, we had a contingent of healers that freaked out. They freaked <laughs> out. They thought he was like, antichrist or whatever right and I, i'm not much into politics i didn't like his personality that much and i you know was looking to have somebody else that didn't have enough energy so they were like one percent of the people that got voted in but anyway so um and i didn't get to vote because i'm canadian and they were freaking out and they were like on facebook going i've lost so much sleep over this i'm like get a hold of yourself you're a freaking healer hello if you can't handle this how do you expect the rest of the world to handle this? Yeah. You know, I wasn't that, you know, but that's what I was feeling inside. Like, yeah, get your act together here. You yeah. model yeah. peace. Yeah. Like, why are you going into this whole, oh, everything's doomed and the world's going to die and explode in a ball of fire. Like, that's kind of the attitude. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, you just showed me your true colors. And I yeah. am not respecting this right now. <laughs> So I did write, I didn't say it to anybody personally, but I did write a little blurb, an article, and even a, you know, you know, a video about that, just saying, you know, okay, maybe I'm not happy either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but hey, I asked God, what was for the highest and greatest good of all? Mm. Yeah. 
And I, and I trusted that whatever the result was, was it, I didn't know why. <laughs> it's like, okay, so this is what happened. This is the person that got voted in. And I asked for what's the highest and greatest good for all. And I'm like, I don't know how it is, but it must be. And so you just go from there, you yeah, know, you yeah. just deal with it and, and you deal with it as elegantly and gracefully as possible. So, so that's the only, yes, yeah, so go ahead. I was going to say it's so well said because I, I I was in the same sort of boat and it's not even my country but I mean I'm sure that, <laughs> that 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 individual in particular has the ability to polarize a lot of people. As, oh yeah, he's as, good at that. Yeah, and <laughs> as very influential people throughout history have. So let's not just single him out as the only person that's ever pissed anybody off because it's not the case. But I remember yeah. when he got into power and I haven't I've never followed politics before or as much as I have in the last eighteen months, Karen. I can tell you. Oh, and, me too. <laughs> and I remember just going, I had a panic attack and I was like, oh my God, he's in. And then I just sat with it, as you just said so beautifully, and just went, I trust there is a reason for this. I have no idea about the intricacies of politics. I'm now going to go and research it, which I did. And then I discovered, which most people hopefully have discovered by now, is that two teams, one orchestrator. So it doesn't matter who you vote for in any political system around the world. The same people are pulling the strings on both sides and manipulating both. So therefore, it doesn't matter who's in office from that perspective. It was a catalyst to wake people up and to get people yeah. um, wanting to participate and caring. And I know you guys don't have, uh, you know, mandatory or, or compulsory voting in your country. We do here. So oh, really? Yeah. So that from that perspective, it's like, oh, wow. More <laughs> I don't know about Canada, but more, more Americans like, okay, well, maybe I should have voted if I am that upset about the outcome. Maybe I should have participated. And you know, so there's all these different factors that go into it. But as you say so beautifully there is that, yeah, it's acceptance of the moment and looking at what we're triggered by and then sitting there yeah. and allowing things to play out. And, right. and, so not, and not having preconceived ideas that we know best because there's a mystery to life. Yeah. And we don't right. always know until we know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And a perfect example of what you said about, um, from what I've understood about the doctors that I've spoken to, as well as friends who are doctors, is that you guys don't get a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of training in the pharmaceutical industry or in the jabs when you're actually studying. It's a very short sort of module and you don't go into all the intricacies unless you want to go and study that and become a pharmacologist or, or whatever else. I don't even know what the term would be. Right. But, but it's the same with crystals. You know, crystals have heavy metals in them and lead and aluminium and mercury and those sorts of things, various crystals, some of them are quite toxic. And if you put certain crystals in water and then you drink that water, then that can be a pollutant to you as well. So even though the crystal is like, oh, it's beautiful and we love it and it's got all these amazing qualities and potentials, there is still in some of them these, this potential as well to do us harm. So again, it's just educating yourself, isn't it? And being, being willing to be in that moment of going, oh, I don't know. Okay, maybe I should find out. Or you know, if that's not my bag and I'm not into that, that's okay. But let someone else take that bag and run with it because that might be their area of expertise. They might be able to see something and intuit something and be a conduit for some more divine information that, that I can't access. And that's that's kind of where the level of healers comes in. Because it's not that anyone's better or worse than anyone at all. It's really important that people listening understand that. It's that some of us have chosen bigger roles and we have different um, you know, duties, I suppose. Social to, responsibilities, <laughs> I like to say. But everybody has that potential, of course, and we're all valid and we're all necessary to come together to participate and co-create. The, you know what we're all going to end up experiencing which is why which is why everything's happening now that it is because we haven't done that together really fully for so many civilizations and now it's like guys can we just get up and get up SHIT together now yeah well you know if 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 uh if you ever look at David Wilcox stuff he likes to follow a lot of um, you know, cycle. So I'm in one of his classes, they're talking about solar cycles and the maximum solar cycle is supposed to be 2025. And every time the 11 year solar cycle happens, there's, there's more drama, there's more war, there's more creativity, there's more things created. It's so interesting. So we, you know, as humans, we can choose, do we have more creativity, right? <laughs> or do we have more war? Uh, but the energy is still there and we are affected by the sun. Um, I'm not sure I absolutely, you know, believe that is the sun going to like, explode into a supernova and some of us get transmuted into different bodies and others remain or they get transported to another planet. I, I don't really know. You know, I, I don't get the answer to that. I don't, uh, I'm not allowed to know the answer to that. Um, every time I ask, God's like, yeah, just, just wait and see. 
<laughs> just just experience right yeah. so uh yeah yeah that's the point isn't it because that like for this whole incarnation gig I mean we forget who we are truly to a certain degree yeah. someone come through with different lifetime memories and etc of course but in general we wipe the slate clean we come in and then we have these experiences that we either take up when they're offered or we don't it's all you know predestined and we tick little boxes and say I'll do this at this age and I'll have this experience when this thing happens before who knows but if we if we you know, if we are told what's going to happen and we know everything, then what is the point of being here? Because it takes the fun exactly. of the experience of going, of, of embodying things rather than just yeah. knowing from here. So I don't want to know what's going to happen. I mean, nobody, I don't think any of us know what's going to happen. We can hypothesize and have, you know, conversations about things and throw out conjecture and uh, this possibly might happen and this may not and this happened before and it shouldn't and blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, none of us knows because... I don't believe we are we are God, we are of God, we are God's creations and we are creator source expressions of that, but I'm not God. I don't know absolutely everything. So and I'm on some higher level, unconsciously, I do because I can tap into that vibration and I'm co-creating that with everybody, but I'm I'm not the guy in the white coat with the beard pulling the string. <laughs> Um, and, and mother god father god i mean there's so many different perspectives that would take religion out of it it's the the energy of the divine masculine the divine feminine the cosmos the merging of all these different perspectives of that and and all of that's up for discussion now too which it should be shouldn't it because as you said before there's certain things that have been taken out of the bible um, for whatever reasons and that may not necessarily be the most reliable text for everybody and for some it is and some it's not and then that's okay but this whole construct of good and bad and God and Satan and the Luciferian vibration that creates more duality and separation. I mean, I've been investigating and researching this to get my own brain around it and to find peace that makes sense for me. And I'm still not there yet. I'm still on that journey. But I find that you now the more that we can separate ourselves from uh, or detach ourselves rather from all these belief systems and just keep going up and up and up and up, unity consciousness, neutrality, all is one and allowing things to go on within ourselves and in our communities and around the globe, doing the best that we can with what we have in, in that moment, then, you know, let the chips fall where they may, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the work is always turned back to the inside, like yeah. for, for ourselves. And, and it doesn't mean we don't help outside or we don't do other outside actions, but the majority of the work, because we are co-creating and manifesting this reality, right? And there is another, real, I call it quantum jumping. So there is another uh, infinity verse, if you will, another complete reality that we are, and it's not a parallel universe. It's not even an alternate timeline. It's a it's an actual completely different reality where divine truth is very different there than it is here, which was just a, a really like, wow, what's really cool about, uh, you know, when I'm doing the work, whether it be Topican healing with uh, groups or VIP or my own healing work is that the ahas that come yeah. and the ahas can be so strange sometimes like, and, but, the, but, the, but it's so cool because that unknown we're talking about, right. It's like that revelation is like, wow, that's cool. Like, like we get to experience that coolness as things go. And we don't get to know everything all at once because there's discovery. And as we discover, we evolve and we evolve and, you know, it's, it's so interesting. Um, and we can, you know, match these dots and put these dots together and understand how things really work, whether it be on the quantum realm or, whatever it is and it's it's so very interesting yeah, and the people yeah. that have that you know like you said like luciferian good versus evil battle i'm not saying that that's bad or that's i'm not even saying that that's not necessarily true on some level but it's like um does you know does that really serve our evolution because mm. we've done a lot of fighting <laughs> in the past already yeah. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, Lucifer's already healed. I mean, the, the quote unquote dark angel that was Lucifer, he's already healed. We already did that. He's on other things. You know, I don't know if anybody is worshiping him. It's like, well, I'm not really there. You know, I mean, they can recreate some energy to some degree, but it's very weak. <laughs> So I just think it's funny. I go, ha ha. I think it's funny. You just know? go watch the series like, on Netflix and you can find out all about Lucifer. <laughs> oh my God. I love that series. I love that series, right? Like it, it, it I love the series because it's this other perspective, mm. you know, of, of that. Like, 
it's <laughs> yeah it's we won't give away the plot but some parts but it's, it's a lot of creative license there but it certainly makes your brain go hmm uh, a bit of brainwashing and and washing right. your brain in that for sure well and that that human perspective yeah. right like there you know he's it's not what we think mm, exactly. i think that's probably yeah. clear um, yeah. It's not what we think. And it's not even when, if people are whatever Satanists or whatever, baby eating, whatever. I mean, I, it's not, you know, even the basis of that is an illusion. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and then the big picture, we are not these bodies. So even if we're upset that our loved ones or whatever, you know, may die or whatever, whether it be of the pathogen or whether it be of the jab, you know, um, we don't know. I mean, us healers can, um, you, you know, tr show people how to transmutate these mm -hmm. sorts of things. And love is incredibly powerful, but you need to resonate the love as much as you can. It could be 10% of the time. Like I, I did find at least in my travels uh, and my mini <laughs> inner research is that 90, 10% of the time connected to zero point is like the ultimate, you know, um, auto healing you don't have to be in that auto healing stillness space 24 seven, that would be 100% fully conscious. And so I haven't met anybody in person that's embodied that has that yet, but you don't need it. You need like nine to 10% and every increment up. If I spend two minutes here, three minutes there, two seconds here, five seconds here, connecting to that zero point, connecting to the creator, that adds up and it's cumulative and things start to happen around me. Magic starts to happen. That's how it's so easy for me to do weather magic. Like nowadays, unless I don't focus on it, but nowadays I'd be like, oh, it's raining really hard. Yeah, when I get home, make sure it stops, right? So then I go up the hill, I'm at home, it stops, right? I go back in, it pours, right? So, but I'm used to it because, you know, I teach people weather magic, it's in the book as well, but it's like, it's just give it. You know, so there's so many things we can do. People think, oh, all these people are going to die and millions of people. I'm like, mm, not if I can help it, <laughs> you know, but there might be a certain amount that mm -hmm. may be necessary for the wake up call. But at the same time, there's so many things that transmute. Why is it that everybody that I love and, you know, are connected to had absolutely nothing going on after the, you know what, mm -hmm. nothing. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. You know? It's allowing it all, Karen, as you say, of just like the, the detaching from something has to be good or bad or right or wrong or fixed or, or whatever word you want to put in there. Because, you know, I have this little saying too, is like, whilst we know, I mean, light and darkness are on the same spectrum, the same bandwidth, they're just at other ends of polarities of that, the duality that, and even, and that's, that's our understanding as humans, because we need to incarnate to understand all that and to experience that in our own ways in order to go oh it's all the same thing you know so that makes sense from that you know, practical point of view and yet to be to understand that there's some obviously horrendous and dark really dark things going on in the world evil for want of a better word and that we can allow that to be there we're not going to be ascending to 5d or higher consciousness or peace love among beings as i say unless we can accept that and allow that to be just another expression of something and people's choices karmically that they need to play out in this lifetime because we may have done something in a previous lifetime that we haven't been right. able to remember consciously so on that higher level and that that's the real uh, you know, thing that messes a lot of people's minds up is to actually try and allow that without going again, understandably, naturally into the human, I want to stop that. And that's bad. And, you know, these people are horrendous and whatever, which they are I'm not condoning it. But there's that higher elevation of like understanding that everything has its place. Everything is. Mm -hmm. We pay a role for our evolution. Some people yeah. play rap role. We're currently playing a healer role in this reality, you know, to evolve our souls. And uh, yeah, it's, it's that spectrum. It's not black or white. It's, it's uh, mm. you know, that I think the number one thing that people can do is, you know, be in that own, in their own vibration of peace, love, joy. That's one of the other books that, you know, that I co, uh, co-wrote, uh, co-authored was navigating the clickety clack, how to stay peace filled in a seemingly toxic world. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that it is, so there's all these different ways in which we can do that because that is ultimately the, the, the best and biggest way to affect the world. Let's not infect the world with our anxiety, our fear, our criticism, our judgment. Let's affect the world positively with our frequency and vibration of that love acceptance oneness and yeah we have to come back to it and then we get pulled out and we come back to it but that's okay that is good enough we don't have to be perfect yeah 
That's beautifully said. Tell us about the books then now to start wrapping up. Like where can we find them and what are the different ones that you've got? Your latest one here. I've got so many things written down here. Uh, well, the first yeah. one awesome was um, Guide to Healing Chronic Pain. Um, and then, I mean, oh, yeah, the Life Wave Patches. I wanted to ask you about that as well. What those, those little segments that you do on your YouTube channel. What are the Life Wave Patches? Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, so I'll just run through the books real quick. The first book I wrote was Guide to Healing Chronic Pain, a Holistic Approach. And it's quite a tome. It's like 416 pages, but it's really meant for people to intuitively like open a page and go, wow, okay, I need to work on nutrition, you know, because it's a body, mind, spirit, excuse me. <coughs> and um, that was written 2014, I think. Gosh, I can't remember. Um, so <coughs> some of the more esoteric stuff that we're talking about today not in the book, <laughs> not yet. And then last year, um, we launched three uh, that ended up being number one best-selling international books, uh, Sensitivity of Superpowers, the last one that is uh, all me. Uh, so that's really about um, how can we take people's sensitivities, because a third of us are considered highly sensitive people, but even non-sensitives can, you know, have, can use their gifts because we're all gifted. And how can we use that sensitivity to intuit better, to heal better, to manifest better? So each chapter is pretty much a methodology of how to do that. So we have weather magic, traffic magic, um, um, uh, healing by proxy prop, you know, how to do energy healing. If you're not a professional energy healer, you know, for yourself and others in a safe and effective way, transformational telepathy. Um, we do teach the stillness on the fly in, in depth to uh, not just to be peaceful, but to be in the auto healing state to get uh, releasing negative emotions, plus help that state manifest our ideal reality. So I actually have a camp based, the, the book is actually based on the camp. The camp is the light warrior training camp, uh, which as of this recording, we're doing uh, in a few weeks in, in July, about four weeks or so. And uh, uh, normally it's an in-person, you know, in-person uh, camp over four or five days, something like that. Um, so we actually practice those skills. So people practice their telekinesis and they practice their transformation telepathy and uh, they practice their weather magic. We've had amazing stories from, <laughs> from all the different camps. Yeah, wow. And uh, the other, the other uh, books that we released last year was Evolutionary Healer. Um, so that is uh, uh, many different healers in that book. Really, really some pretty woo-woo stuff there. <laughs> the one, my chapter is about alternate self syndrome, how you know, we're all healing all timelines simultaneously and some sensitive people can actually feel what's going on in their alternate reality, including heart attacks and things like that that can affect us physically here. And then there's a little healing, a mini healing protocol of how to, you know, uh, how to uh, support that process. So you don't suffer from alternate self syndrome um, symptoms. And then the last book I mentioned earlier, Navigating the Clicky Clack, How to Stay Peace Filled in a Seemingly Toxic World. So I co-authored that with a number of mentors, teachers, and coaches, and healers related to that, how to get to the center of the storm, you know, uh, in that eye of the hurricane, so you're not knocked off your center, and you're still radiating that higher vibration, and speaking of higher vibration, the Life Wave Patches is a phototherapy tool I absolutely love, in fact, I have some right on <laughs> right now, <laughs> right here, I've got it on different meridians, so being an acupuncturist, it was really, like, very clear to me, this is a very powerful tool, because first of all, there's no needles. Second of all, it's like getting a mini healing, you know, energy for like 12 hours in a row. And each patch is programmed with different frequencies to affect different parts of the body. So the most popular one we have right now is called the X39 and it enhances um, your stem cells through a peptide called GHK copper peptide. And if you actually looked GHKCU up it is amazing what it does. Of course, we cannot make any of those fancy claims, <laughs> uh, but we can say it increases, you know, vitality, endurance, athletic performance, decreased wrinkles, uh, wound repair, uh, uh, better quality of uh, sleep, um, scar tissue repair. So those are things that we have done clinical studies on and uh, it's, uh, you know, patented technology and it's light, you know, that it's light um, and it uh, is non-invasive and a heck of a lot cheaper than stem cell injections, which a third of the time doesn't work at all. <laughs> um, yeah so it's great i i just have seen so many people have amazing you know results because light is fast right if you take it and i don't down supplements i just don't take very many anymore but if you take a supplement it's got to digest and then you know there's all these things that have to happen and usually it takes three to six months 
for a particular supplement to make a shift in the body that you can tell appreciably that something's happening. Um, like I, I had a, a HCG supplement I was taking, it had to be an empty stomach before bed. It was really hard to take, but I did it for six months to notice the thing. <laughs> I spent $80 a month, right, on it. But with this phototherapy, when I was had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and uh, I was very, very tired and in pain, um, this technology helped me immensely get out of those symptoms. Like it was like a miracle for me. And I've been a big fan ever since. I ended up being a distributor because I loved them so much. Met the inventor and the CEO and loved him. Uh, I really remind me to send you the link of his last webinar. I think it's on YouTube. You'll be quite uh, pleased about <laughs> what his topic was. But anyway, so I have great respect for him. And uh, it's just a, a great, easy and inexpensive way for people to, you know, heal themselves with the tool without being a professional healer and doing what I do. And, and it's fast and, uh, you know, money back guarantee, right? So it's just fast and, and effective for most people that I found. And as a medical doctor and acupuncturist, big fan of them. So I did write a whole chapter about them in my guide to healing chronic pain book, which needs to be updated because now we have a whole bunch of other patches besides that one. Yeah, okay, great. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Well, I'll make sure I put all those links in the description with this video for sure so people know how to get hold of you and where to buy the books. Uh, your website, drkarencan.com, or is there another? Uh, karencan.com. Karencan.com, great. And then there's yeah. links to where they can purchase the books and all these and mm -hmm. workshops and sign up for all your amazingness that you're offering. That'd be great. <laughs> I'll give you all those links. And yeah, thank you so much for um, you know, for having me on, on your show today and uh, for doing the work that you do, we're obviously, you know, aligned on the same place. And I learned a new word from you, conspiritualist. I've <laughs> never heard that word before. I actually put it in a, a meme or on Instagram. People are like, that's cool. Where'd you get that? <laughs> it wasn't, it's not, I can't take credit for that. I mean, I, I'm making uh, it all the time, Karen, in my yoga classes. I'm always just like, you know, when you get tongue tied and then I come out with a word and I go, oh, that's a good one. Just made that. <laughs> um, but yeah, conspirituality, that was when I was you know, bundled in with a whole lot of uh, conspiracy theorists at the beginning of 2020 for speaking out against the mainstream media. And there's a there's a podcast of that name and a, a website oh, that, that okay. aims to, um, yeah, to pull down people who basically were saying something that's different to the mm. narrative. So I found that I was, it was like a badge of honor. It's like, oh, I've been banned from certain platforms and I've, <laughs> I've been in jail uh, online and I've been on this website. It's like, oh, okay, I must be doing something right in some way. And oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know David Icke calls himself a, a conspiracy realist. Right, yes. which it was the first time I, I heard that term, uh, and I really liked it. But you know, um, you know, my my aunt was like lamenting to my father, like, "Oh dear, I think she's she's a you know gone into conspiracy theorist, right?" And I'm thinking, wait a second, um, I may follow some just to see what is you know what resonates, what doesn't resonate, right? Like some does, some things do, some things don't. But I actually don't make up the theories. <laughs> you know, you know, I it, it should. So I like the word conspiracy spirituality because I always bring it back to Dude. spirituality exactly so I, I kind of like that term so thank you for introducing me to that term <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Like, there was a new one that uh, when I spoke with Hina Maria last week again she's amazing I'm sure you've heard of her she's doing amazing work in Europe um, to raise awareness about the dangers of the jab and, and human rights and freedom um, this mm. Finnish sister who lives in Spain and apparently now there's only conspiracy theorists and uh, we're not activists anymore. We're terrorists. So, I'm just, oh. yeah, I know. And I went, well, bugger that. We're gonna, if we're going to be terrorists, we're going to be truth terrorists, okay? I'm a truth terrorist and I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you just yeah, we'll have to think of some, yeah, some, some more alliterations related to that. Uh, but, yeah, so all these things, it's so interesting because, you know, they're there to trigger us. They're there to trigger us. And sometimes I'm just like, I say to the universe, I know what you're doing and I'm passing this test. I'm not going <laughs> to. Thank you so much, you know? Uh, yeah. Yes. As I go my Instagram scroll, you know, sometimes things are pretty shocking. Yeah. Yeah. And then I go, okay, that's interesting. I'm feeling this energy in my body, right? Do I want to keep it? Do I not want to keep it? Do I want to enjoy it just for five minutes? <laughs> you know, <laughs> be a drama queen just for five minutes and then let it go. And so, but I, I can't expect everybody to be able to navigate that. So that's why I have a little bit more or a lot more compassion for people who are on the other end who are like, I don't believe anything except yeah. what I see on TV news because it's like, because it's really stressful for them yeah. to even entertain the other. They yeah. don't have that capacity. And it's like, okay, let me just put a ball of love around you. And you know, that's the best we can do.
yeah. It's all a big illusion, as you know, too. So illusions are abound on the, the front end, the back end, everywhere at the moment. And to quote you back to yourself, my darling, uh, we are in the energy age, not the information age. I love that. That was from one of your videos I watched the other day. So that <laughs> encapsulates everything that we are. We're moving from all of this head stuff and brainwashing to washing ourselves and our cells and our souls and our psyches and everything to move back towards that which we actually are, which is that beautiful picture behind you, pure streaks of light, pure incarnation. Mm, yeah, and that was beautiful alliteration you just did. Well done. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <I'm> pretty impressed. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully we can do this again, Karen. I'd love to chat with you and do part two, three, five, nine, ten, whatever. So um, <laughs> sending it Absolutely. It was, uh, it was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. And I think Blaze is coming up to say goodbye as well now. So Hi, he, he knows intuitively. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> so um, <laughs> love to you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Much love to you as well. Bye. Bye.